poppin' everybody? Hello and welcome to Popcorn Culture. My name is Ben Carlin and I am your host. Here with me today is my brother Jay, who will be in every episode. The other host and apparently the voice that was heard first in the last podcast. Wait, hold on. Yeah. For, well, hold on. Before, mm-hmm. You just skated past a couple of big things yeah, there. Did we? Special guest. Moving on Thanks to the corny joke. Here. Thanks for being <laughs> here. Uh, what, what, what was the reason that you were the first voice heard? Well, I think what must have happened is that during our pre-recording session, yes. we often have little conversations with the editor, Ethan, who is not present. And we've been like, hey, if, I, if these are ever very like like funny or you think it'd be funny to introduce, to put these in before the show starts, you could just do that. Yeah. So I think that's probably what he did. And I just talked first, but I had several tweets that were like, oh, I heard I heard Jay talking first. Did Jazzy Jay finally take the lead? No. Sadly, no Jazzy Jay fans out there. Uh, Thank Jazzy, you to all, all my Buzzy B supporters. Jazzy J continues uh, to be your other host for the time being. Special guest. Anyway, <laughs> moving firmly on to our corny joke of the week. Jay, why can't your nose be 12 inches long? Because then it would be a foot. Man. Yeah, is that it? That is it. Oh, man. Because then it would be a foot. Uh, hilarious. Uh, hilarious. Okay. Let me tell you, okay, this was a weird thing I was uh, looking up on Wikipedia last night, is the joke, why did the chicken cross the road? Like the origin of it? Like what, like so, yeah, because this is a joke that kids will spit off all the time. Why did the chicken cross the road? To get to the other side. And it just like occurred to me, that, like, well, it's 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 bothered me forever, or like since I was a kid, like, that's not funny. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. Right. And I'm like, and so I was looking it up to see if... Really, it's more like the framework for other jokes, which it has become because in it in and of itself has become like a very popular joke. Like, why did the chicken cross the road to get the other side? So you would like substitute out and like that's like this is the framework. It's the other jokes are funny because the answer to this joke is to get to the other side. Okay. Now I don't have good examples on hand because I can't remember them. Let's I'm going to look one up. Hold on. Okay. Hold. We're going to we're going to do a ready set hold. So, like, for example, you might say, why did the dinosaur cross the road? And the answer would be, because chickens didn't exist yet. (laughs) Because that was only funny because of the the existing answer. Okay, so basically what it means is that, why did the chicken cross the road? It's like the baseline. It's like the setup for all other jokes. Well, that that was like my suspicion. Oh, I see. Okay. Right. But it turns out that according to the Wikipedia page that Why Did the Chicken Cross the Road originated in the 1847 edition of The Knickerbocker. I'm going to put a pin in that for a second. Yeah, we shall. We shall. You know why. Um, And... It was an example of anti-humor. So basically, it's supposed to be funny because you're expecting it to be funny, but it's not. Oh. That's the, it's like the joke is that it's not funny. The joke is that it's not funny. Okay, okay. So it's almost like dry humor. Basically. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yes. I, I sort of, I can get behind that a little bit. Like it had to be, it had to be invented at some point in time. And it probably was a, like now it seems so basic. Right. Like it could have been kind of groundbreaking at the time. Yes. Because, because now it's like the most obvious and worn in joke of all time. Right. Like why did the, why did the chicken cross the road? It's like, it's like the example of, of a joke. Yeah, exactly. You're right. That's, that's the, the example of a joke, but I think it's, a problematic example of a joke because it's like the most common joke kids know and right. it's not funny and it's not funny yeah yeah it, like, it, and, they, and like i don't think kids know that like they think it's hysterical or i don't know if they don't think it's hysterical or if they're like i think it just to me as a kid it just made me confused because i was like it just made me feel like i don't get it well to me it always felt and i guess the answer people so like to get to the other side but like i always just sort of assumed that there was like no i don't know I, it's almost like a chicken and an egg type of <laughs> no not even to have that be so directly connected type of question where I guess like it's never really felt like there was a punchline to the joke right that's what I think as a kid I was like everyone says to get to the other side but that's not the actual punchline someday someone's like why like no to me it was like no one actually knows the punchline no one knows the punchline yeah yeah I I, I prefer that like it's it's a it's the world's greatest mystery yeah okay and they need Nick Cage to come in Nicolas Cage to have an entire movie solving it why did the chicken cross the road? Yeah, and there's clues on the back of the Declaration of Independence, probably. <laughs> that would be hilarious. I do like this one, the example they get, give, which is, Ben, why did the chicken cross the road? I don't know why. To get to the idiot's house. Knock, knock. Who's there? The chicken! 
Hey! <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, that is so setup. good. The setup. <laughs> That is so good. <laughs> that is, that's got to be the best why did the chick across the road joke. I have to tell you that I have so much maximum appreciation for this this joke. The, do you it's right like, now? Yes, or, that is so good. That's a good. That's like combining it's two the, the whole two realms. most iconic jokes of yeah. all time. Yeah, is knock knock jokes and why did the chicken cross the road? Yes, and now they've been melded they've together been melded into together. the greatest joke that's ever existed. I want people to come up with better. Yeah, why did the chicken cross the road jokes? for to share them with us yeah absolutely best version that that would be a great thing to share over on the reddit or if you want to email them to us at popcornculturepod at gmail.com because there there are some good ones like i, I think it's actually on the screen in front of us but one of the ones that would have been top of mind for me is like why did the chicken cross the playground why to get to the other slide oh Ayo! this is this is the one i always go to no one's allowed to leave this one because to me this is the most obvious one okay Ready? Why didn't the skeleton cross the road? Because it's dead. Because he didn't have any guts. <laughs> oh, pretty good. Pretty good. Uh, hilarious. Oh, man. I know. Man, everyone's like, okay, turning this off. <laughs> <laughs> I've had enough. These, these guys didn't have it this week. <laughs> they didn't have it. Did you, Ben, did you hear that idiot joke? <laughs> it, it wasn't was, good. It was, it was hilarious. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Actually, let's just talk about that exact thought, though. Like, like they weren't feeling it this week or something. Like, record. Recording a podcast to me is such a different experience from like creating scripted content, yeah, which is also challenging for its own reasons. Like being able to find new ways to like overanalyze, you know, Disney, Pixar, Star Wars, Harry Potter, Marvel, like any of those things. It's not like there's just a whole bunch of topics that exist out there that you can just be like, oh, I'm going to, I'm going to discuss this one this week. You know, like yeah. you have to find them and that's, that's challenging. Yeah. But the process of sitting down to have an entertaining conversation right. every week, there have been plenty of times where we've like, we've like hung up the mics and I'm like, we didn't have it this week. We didn't like, have we, it this week. We, we just lost people. <laughs> <laughs> they were like, they were like, I was really enjoying this podcast until that one week. Until that one week. It was week 49, apparently. Week 49, where, where like, everybody was like, that mm, was a week. That was it. Week. Uh -huh. hey. A week, week. A week, week. Oh, uh, man. Hilarious. Indeed. I think we're on point this week, Ben. Yeah? You feel like we've got, like, we've got the flavor sizzling? Yeah, the flavor is, the, the, the ribs are smoking, as it were. As it were, as it will be. As it will be. Because I now have a smoker you set have up a in smoker. my backyard. Yeah, so did you, we had, you had a conundrum a couple weeks ago about what you were going to smoke in your smoker. Yeah, so far I'm still having that ongoing conundrum. It's oh, okay. like, it's, there's this, like, really weird, I've been so excited excited about this and like um i would say this particular purchase was expensive enough that it, it was like if it would fall into the category of me as an adult where i have to like save my money to buy it yeah like um and that is to say like where i, I wouldn't want like something that was such like a me purchase to come out of like my like my family's like household you know operating income or whatever yeah so it's like you know I, I sort of stash money to the side and then once it reaches like a threshold it's like okay now i can do something with this right and so this was one of those things and so i was like daydreaming about like being able to like smoke ribs or make like pulled pork or like doing all of these you know fun smoking activities for such a period of time and then it arrived and it was like i was so excited that the box was there yeah like it was like an endeavor and it weighs like 175 pounds. So getting oh. the box like to a place where I could like put it together was like endeavor number one. Yeah, that's like its own challenge. It was. Yeah. And then and then it was like, OK, well, now I have to spend a couple hours putting this thing together. So it was like endeavor number two. And then I needed to like take it and find a spot for it. Endeavor yeah. number three. I'm surprised you didn't have like a pre-planned spot for it. Well, I did have a pre-planned spot for it. And then I decided that I, I was like, well, I was just so torn about it because I've been I've had all this concern about the uh, the s smoke itself being like too close in proximity to my physical house. Okay. So the place that I wanted to put it did not leave enough room to have it far enough away to meet the specified regulations. Okay. While still then being a convenient space for it to exist. Okay. It was, so anyway, that was, that was a whole problem where I needed to like figure out where it was going to go. When you say like regulations, do you mean like, like someone could like you, you'd be breaking the law by putting it in certain spots? No, just that you'd be increasing the risk of, of like, of it as a fire hazard, which I, I would say is minimal because my home is made of brick anyway, which mm. is, you know, not super flammable, but, um, either way, I mean, I still wanted to, you know, keep it like 18 inches away from the house. Okay. But 18 inches away from the house and still existing in the spot made it so that it was too far away. So 
I see. Then I had a problem. So anyway, but this has been like the whole, it's like brain crack or it's like, you know, I've described to you like me wanting to like create a vlog before, but it's like, I can't do it. You've mentioned it. I have mentioned it. Now yeah. I'm mentioning it again. Yeah. What um, are you doing? I know. I don't know why I did that. There's <laughs> just, a Twitter account I think out there called has been started a vlog yet. <laughs> We're going to have some fresh stuff to talk yeah, about. Like, guess what? Yeah. But so my problem is, is that like, it doesn't matter what vlog number two is about. Like vlog number two could be about anything. It could be boring as raisins, which mm-hmm. by the way, are the most boring. I hate raisins. Yeah. Those are the most boring. They are the most boring. Like of all things. Yeah. I, I would just firmly stand behind my belief that raisins are the most boring. Do you know, we have this little box at the house. Don't tell me it's full of raisins. It is not. <laughs> It's full of little boxes of raisins. You have a box full of little boxes of raisins? We ha- Let me finish the whole story. I'm sorry. We have got a box that is labeled uh, snacks for kids. And to be clear, only one of my kids can eat snacks. Okay. So it's just Luke snacks. Luke snacks. Okay. Yeah, yeah. For now. But it's got a bunch of just like mini cliff bars that he likes and like applesauce. And once upon a time, uh, Beth bought this like box of tiny boxes of raisins, which okay. I guess were supposed to be like a, you know, like a healthy A treat. disappointment. <laughs> I understand completely. Yes. Predictably, they have lasted a long time. Predictably. So anyway, Indeed. yeah. Oftentimes, Luke will prompt you for whatever specific snack he wants. He'll be like, I just want a bar. Just want a bar. And he'll be like, okay. You know. Right, right. <laughs> we'll a, see. a bar is like a cliff bar. Like a, yeah, like a, like a, like a yeah, granola bar or something. Okay, sure, sure. Yeah. And we, we have these little mini cliff bar things that he likes. Um, and I'll be like, let's have breakfast first or, you know, whatever it is. Sure. But one day I just, I, he's like, can I, you know, I was like, do you want a snack? And he's like, yes. I was like, okay. And I just bring the whole thing down and it's got like these bars and it's got these, you know, uh, we have this thing called pirate's booty, which is like almost popcorn. I don't know how to describe it. I'm like puffed cheese awesomeness yeah 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 i think we've yeah. talked about that before how do they puff no one knows no one kn- leaf blowers that's what Le- we're leaf about. Blowers. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's it <laughs> Uh, and like peeking out at the very bottom was this tiny little corner of a box of raisins. And he just like reaches past all the good stuff. It goes for the raisins. And I was like, I can't believe that just happened. <laughs> you are not my son. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> not that. I was just shocked. Like, man, you went for the raisins. Okay. Well, I'm not going to stop you. I guess it's, it's healthy. I guess everyone needs to learn. But that's the thing about raisins. And I think maybe it's part of the disappointing factor of raisins is that they do come in those small, like perfect little red boxes, you know, with like, the these weren't even the sun made ones. Yeah. Oh, these and red off boxes. brand raisins. They were Kroger brand. Okay, well, little boxes of raisins. There was a white box of raisins. What I will credit raisins with is great packaging. Yeah. Because oh. like I see a box of raisins and I'm like, yes, I want that small perfect box. Like mm. I don't know if it like matches the golden ratio or something. Probably. Like where it's it's like appealing to the eye, mm. but it's also like a nice like gloss box. It's mm. almost like if Apple made raisins, they would have packaged it in that red box. Right. You you following me? I yeah. Yeah, okay, you're with me 100%. I, I mean, tell. most Apple products come in like white boxes. I know, but Jay, this is raisins. Yeah. And so they changed it up for raisins. Let me tell you what raisins is doing right, and that's raisin bran. Oh goodness gracious. Yeah. Not raisin bran regular. Raisin bran crunch. Raisin bran crunch. Raisin bran crunch. <laughs> See, the thing is about raisin bran the best. No, the thing about raisin bran crunch to me is it would be my favorite cereal if it was just called bran crunch. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I think this is what happened or maybe do you remember when we were kids we would go to our grandparents house and clusters they would have a cereal called clusters i guess honey nut clusters honey nut clusters honey nut clusters and it was i don't know i feel like you and me would just sit with our grandpa len on the couch and pick out the clusters from the cereal like it was mining for gold like it was <laughs> yes i mean truly though like the clusters were so delicious and every once in a while you'd find like a particularly big cluster yeah. and grandpa would think it was really cool yeah he'd be like wow now that's a good one yeah and then i'd be like i found a good one like yeah. you know and it was like you know, the sense of pride i'm now realizing he was humoring us and did not actually he was not blown away he was just enjoying hanging out with his grandkids for sure okay but this is one of those it's like i i that you're right raisin bran crunch is just raisin bran with clusters sure and i think part of me like really remembers that time when we were getting the clusters despite the fact that i could just go to the store and buy honey nut clusters do they sell honey nut clusters ben this was the great scam of our childhood is that we could have just been buying it at home mom could have bought mom could have bought clusters it It wasn't wasn't, a regional thing it wasn't like regional to new york like only allowed we could have had it our whole lives the honey nut clusters. <laughs> I'm 
speechless. Are you blown away? You I mean don't. to tell me that if I go to the grocery store, there are clusters? I think, I mean, I don't even know if they still make the cereal, but there should be. I'm going to, we should look it up. My... My insides are like exploding right now. <laughs> like you want like, you want a bowl? Like so, why would why would mom have not bought us clusters? I don't know. We love them. It is beyond me. Maybe it was like. Do you think she was trying to preserve this this experience that we were having with with grandpa? It is possible. However, I remember that on the other side of the family, yeah, dad's parents, dad's parents, I've right, I've, yeah, I know them. You know them. Yeah, there was a different cereal that also was introduced to us there called Blueberry grape- Morning. Oh, wow. I, oh. I thought it was going to be Grape Nuts. No, I mean, I know you can get Grape Nuts at the store. I know you can get sure. Grape Nuts at the store. They're like as solid as a box of sawdust. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, Blue- Do you remember the, the cereal Blueberry Morning? Not even slightly. I mean, it's basically raisin bread except blue <laughs> dried blueberries. <laughs> but Grandma would have them. And, she, you know, I guess she liked it. And she like. Let me try it. And it was very good. And then I remember having Blueberry Morning at the house growing up. So I don't know how we ended up with Blueberry Morning, but not Honey Nut Clusters. I don't know how you remember Blueberry Morning and not Grape Nuts. I, of course, remember Grape Nuts, but Grape Nuts wasn't this like grandparent locked item. Oh, it was to me, though. Well, I, I suppose it wasn't because we ultimately got them at home. Yeah, we got the. I remember you being fascinated with microwaving gra- grape nuts. Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> what it was. I would put them in the microwave and have, like, porridge. <laughs> what? This is such a weird... They were like... Get, like, grape nuts are... For old people, right? Because we're like fiber, I want to say. <laughs> okay, that's never been made clear to me. Right, so it must have seemed so weird. It, you may as well have been like requesting prune juice or something. Or even worse, raisins. <laughs> raisin bran, I stand by raisin bran crunch. It's so good. Okay, well, if they ever come out with, if raisin bran crunch ever comes out with its its other sister cereal called bran crunch, bran crunch. count me in. Let me I tell will you, be there. ironically, the other cereal that I, I buy two cereals for myself. Okay. And one is raisin bran crunch and the other one is called smart start. <laughs> People are listening are like, yeah, you like the worst cereals. <laughs> These are my two favorite cereals. Uh, and let me just tell you, Smart Start is basically crunchier Honey Nut Clusters. It's just like the the flakes themselves are extra crunchy, and then it also has clusters. Oh my gosh. Okay, so let me tell you this then. Do you ever, do you remember, this was like a big thing when we were kids. There was a movie called The Indian in the Cupboard. Oh yeah, 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 I do remember that. Which, by the way, coolest cupboard ever. It was like amazing and had like a lock and key and was so perfect and spectacular. Yeah. But like, uh, the, the, I, the movie came out where the like basically anything you put into the cupboard and then you like locked it and then opened it again would like come to life. Yes. And so he has like his little like action figure that he's turned into like a, a real living person who's like, you know, existing in I think like a is it like a like a like a hamster containment center or is it just Oh, I don't remember a space. Anyway, yeah. but at one point in time he gives him like a single piece of like granola or in my mind a cluster. Yeah. Which then to this small like you know, action figure sized person is like the size of a basketball. Yeah. And as a kid, I was always like, could you imagine having a cluster the size of a basketball? Uh, like there was nothing better. There was like, I couldn't imagine the riches I would feel <laughs> if I had a cluster the size of a basketball. <laughs> Oh, it would have been the best day. It would have been the best day because there you could never have enough clusters. Even if you went and pulled them all out of the cereal, an entire box worth, it still wasn't enough clusters. Not, not enough. Yeah. Anyway. There you go. There you go. So coming full circle, even though I don't like dehydrated ra- uh, grapes <laughs> in the slightest, mm-hmm. uh, I am now excited to dehydrate meats uh, there you go. In, in a sense with my with my smoker. And so the, the issue. Wait, wait, does the dehydrate meats? Well, it's like a, you can get like a dehydrator. You could get to a like dehydrator. Make jerky. You can make jerky in a smoker as oh, well. Oh, okay. It's, okay. it's possible. Yeah. I see. Um, but the, the big issue that I've been having is I've been so excited about it and I've put it on such a pedestal in my brain yeah. that now I'm like, I'm like terrified to smoke something and have it not be like amazing. Oh, I see. And that shouldn't be the case, but I, I, it's like my big problem with everything. Like I'm savoring having not done it because now the anticipation that I get to enjoy is like almost as good. Right. Like what if you do it and it's not as great and you just, you just bought a thing that's just big and at your house now and big and at my house. And you'd be like, and people are like, Oh, do you use it? You'd be like, well, we, you know, we smoke smoked some wings um like a month ago yeah it's like uh it takes so long yeah yes that would be the problem is that it's such a big thing 
Yeah. If you don't use it, there's no way people are going to ask you about it. Right. I know. A lot so, of pressure. You got to eat a lot of smoked things now. I know. I know. It's going to be part of my personality. I guess so. Although a uh, good friend, Mike, uh, GMA member, uh, made... And I enjoyed yesterday evening smoked mashed mashed potatoes. Smoked mashed potatoes. Smoked mashed potatoes. Okay. And all he had to do was smoke the potatoes for about 30 minutes and then mashed them up and smoked taters and they were delicious. So it seems like you almost can't go wrong. You just put it in there, wait for it to come out. It's That's effectively the idea. Yeah. I've literally, so it's it, for the folks at home, in case anyone out there also is into smoking anything uh it's a it's a traeger which is the the name brand of it and it uh i have heard it referred to as like the easy bake oven for adults because it is so hyper controllable like literally from your phone Mm. that there is almost not skill involved like to be like to be good at smoking meats with a traeger is like to be good at sharpening pencils with a pencil sharpener i see like it's just what it does just what it does just what it does but why wouldn't you why would you want it to be actively harder well that and that's my great question yeah uh, and so i was actually i was telling my father-in-law that i was looking to buy this and he was like oh that's cheating and i was like i don't care right. <laughs> like <Wait. laughs> it was it actually it was a big moment for me because i felt like normally i would say I'm, I'm at least somewhat intimidated by my father-in-law to the point where it would be like I, he would say something like that and i'd be like yeah you're right it's a good point i'm not gonna get one mm-hmm. but this this was like the opposite where it was like no that's that's the goal, like I'm so excited, it's my, it's the best feature of the thing I'm looking at. Yeah. Is that it's, is that it's like, it's like it's cheating, except I will also have delicious smoked meats at the end of the day. Here's what your response to be, should be like, you you know what? Do you own a drill? People will be like, yeah, I own a drill. And be like, well, that's cheating. I only use screwdrivers. <laughs> I cannot <laughs> imagine using a screwdriver to drive screws. Right. <laughs> it's a terrible name. They should have called drills. <clears throat> screwdrivers. Screwdrivers. <laughs> What should they have called screwdrivers then? Drills. <laughs> oh, you think they have them wrong? You can just you can just flip them. You can just flip them. I mean, this we, is I, a drill. I, it's, don't invent a new word. Or you could always call it a twisty turny. A twisty. <laughs> yeah. Twist a lot. Yeah. <laughs> twist, 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 twist. Is he done? No, not even close. Or you could call it a screw turner. A screw turner. There yeah, you go. that would probably be better than screwdriver. Driver yeah. includes like the the mental image <clears throat> of my mind of like power. Mm-hmm. You know, vigor. Yes. So to speak. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so that's where I'm at. All right. Drills are poorly named. Screwdrivers are poorly named. And Ben's cheating at smoking. Well, actually, I'm not. I'm, I haven't successfully yeah, smoked anything Ben's, yet. So right now, I'm. I will be ben cheating failing at failing sm- at attempting to cheat <laughs> at smoking. I have plans to cheat. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. That's where we're at. That's where we're at. Hey, Jay, how about a fun fact about coyotes? Let's have it. We got to keep the segment alive because the more that I like, at first I was like, I'll just look up the creature coyotes and fun facts about them. But then I've actually started looking more into like coyote lore. And oh, it's like there's like a whole lot to be done with coyotes. Such as? Well, such as uh, in Native American cultures, coyotes often have the role of trickster as well as a clown in traditional stories. Oh, that is fun. Which I thought was kind of interesting. It yeah. seems like it's like it's the like Fred the and George. Oh, well, or, no, it's the coyote. Oh, I know. But like that's uh, that seems to me the 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 role a fox plays in many like uh stories literary tales literary tales yeah, fables yeah 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 yeah, yeah. I, I i actually i do get that i feel Zootopias. like utopias right 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 yeah. you're not wrong it does feel like foxes do kind of have that reputation um but interestingly it sounds like the especially within like native american culture and stories it sounds like the coyote tends to share this role with the raven really the raven the raven of all things yeah i don't know why but i I found that to be particularly interesting. I was like, man, coyote, raven, hanging out. Apparently, they paddle canoe together. Ravens and coyotes paddle canoes? Yeah. What does that mean? It's a really, really good question. Did you read the sentence, ravens and coyotes paddle canoe? Yeah. I read it. What I have no... Actually, I tried to make that my fun fact about coyotes for this week, and I was having such a hard time comprehending it that I was like, hmm... I'm just going to stick with this other fact and then I'll bring it up and express my lack of understanding about the canoe element to the to the tale, the literary piece. Maybe maybe this is the the old way of shipping things is canoeing things. <laughs> <laughs> yes, before the internet, yeah. instead of shipping something, they canoed. We, you had to use lesser because ships are also waterborne vessels. Right. Everyone knows they used to be called relation canoes. Right. Yes. And now now they're called relation ships. Right. Because yeah. technology has improved. Right. The term will continue to evolve 
with modern day technology. Right. Eventually, you it, will like you'll be like r- relation rockets. R- yes. You know. Yes, or relation flying cars. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's what it'll be. I like relation flight. rockets. Yeah, relation rockets. <laughs> yeah, better than good. relationships by a mile. Yeah. Okay. And there we go. Everyone, tell us about your latest relation rocket ship problem. Oh, it still has a ship oh, at the end. Does. Oh no. Maybe mm-hmm. we're already a relation rockets, and they've just shorthanded it right back down to ship. Maybe that is what. I, well, but I like <clears> to think <throat> that whenever we say relationship, what we're really saying is relation rocket. But people have just appropriated the term. Yeah. You know, so that now it's relationship because I, it's like yeah, we've yeah. gotten there. We've gotten there. We've gotten there. We've sorted it yes all right well done technology was way too advanced if, if we're if we're being honest with ourselves for it to still be relationships yeah like waterborne vessels after all this time like no. we're, yeah we're past we're in that. space now y'all exactly yeah we're talking about like living on the moon well are we are we there is that a thing that's happening are I, people living I, on the moon i well not not presently i mean there's not people out there right now like you know walking around picking up moon rocks and such but i do believe that it is in the short scope plan sequence i'm using my way of talking to uh hopefully have my thoughts arrive in an appropriate way yeah so sometimes maybe i'm doing that sometimes i'm using like big words and stuff to sort of like let my brain keep working through where i'm going i I bet that is what's happening because you're like let me say a bigger word so i have a longer time to think except that saying the bigger word requires a bit of thinking in its own rights and then i gotta think of another big word to keep it going the whole process is slowing me down right but eventually i will land on the word i'm aiming for just like people will We'll land on the moon and stay there. Ooh, full circle. We full got circle. there. Yeah, like an orbit. Like an- <laughs> CJ, today, this, this is the week where we've lost it. <laughs> we have not lost it, Ben. We are relationshipping coyotes and ravens. We are. We yeah. are, yes. Apparently someone is. So, yeah, well, culture, you know, history. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Okay, let's see here. Moving office. Mm-hmm. Okay, so moving on from weird, nonsensical, possibly fever dream uh, conversation, which it feels like has been our last 10 minutes or so. Maybe. We're currently in the process for the, what is this? Is this the third time moving our our offices? Yes, we are. Super Carlin Brothers is moving. Uh Again. <laughs> Again. <laughs> Which is so weird. Yeah, when we started Super Carlin Brothers, we, of course, shared a basement in a house. We did. And then it sort of, then I moved out and uh, the set sort of became like my office at my house. Right. That yeah, we, which was which was like you didn't put the addition on your house, but you bought a house that had an addition on it. Yeah. So like the the like when you were to walk in, the leftmost wall was formerly the exterior wall of the home. Yes. And and now it was the blue the famous blue wall the that fam- we have, yeah. you know, as our as our background set. That is the one consistent thing that we've had since the very beginning of the Super Carlin Brothers YouTube channel is the cosmic blue the backdrop. The cosmic blue wall. Yeah. 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 It has it has followed us around <laughs> everywhere. Uh, so yeah, it was at my house. And then, the, like, in the early days of Super Carlin Brothers, the idea that we ever would have had an external office that didn't just exist inside the house didn't even cross my mind. Right. Yeah. It, it did feel, like, it, so unnecessary. So, like, my my aquarium business, I, I like, was something that I started, and it was, like, out of my basement, and it was sort of like this is just a stopgap until I can afford like a larger premises where I can have like more built out space. Right. Which made sense for what that was yeah. because you, you kind of needed like a lift gate door and like a, a bigger warehousey type of location. But for a, a, a vlog, for a video series, it was almost like almost everybody's doing this from their bedroom anyway. Right. Like, it's like expected. Yeah. The whole idea is to do it from your home right that's that's what we're seeing with everybody is like the inside of their homes right yeah for the most part yeah then once we once we had hired help it was weird to have people come to the house yeah exactly to do to do work so then we had our first office which was like in an apartment then we're recording this from the office after that which is like i don't know like a proper commercial space. Yes, yes. It's a it's a commercial space that yeah has like um it it almost seems like it could be like a collab type of place where it's like a big kind of semi open area with like mm-hmm. like office offices that like individuals probably could have rented like yeah like an accountant who worked for themselves could probably work out of the c- current space we're sitting in yeah and just like rent this like little little smaller area of a bigger area and then have like shared facilities and stuff. I think um, they used to sell furniture here, right? I, I believe we, yeah. yeah. Uh, once one, upon a time once upon a time and so anyway now we're now we're moving to a again a new location in in downtown roanoke that we're excited about but it's got this one 
it's perfect. Like we walked in and I think every person was like, this is our new office. This yeah. is so great. There's one exception to that in that the only way to get it is to walk straight up three flights of stairs. Third floor walk up. Third floor walk up. And yeah. the, the stairs go straight up. It's not like a like a winding, like a snake pattern, you know, like the old phone game. Yeah. It's not like that where you're like walking in this like circular square up flights. It's I would say that was to its benefit. I would say it's to its benefit. Yeah. yeah. Fewer, fewer turns. Yeah. Fewer turns. But it, it's like you open, you open the door and it's like literally you're just looking at how many steps was it? It was 45. 45 steps just mm-hmm. up. Straight up. Straight up. Going up. Yeah. That was the big... And it's like you're... Of course, when you're looking at the spot, you're like, oh, well, you know, there's no elevator, but whatever. Three flights of stairs. No big deal. Not a problem. And I think that will remain true. But the immediate hurdle we found last week as we were moving is moving, where you have to get everything up there the first time. Yes. Yeah. And it's... I think it's going to be something that I am acutely aware of every time we have something like new purchased for the new office where it's like, yeah. this is yet one more thing that has now been brought up three flights of stairs. Right. Where if, if the day ever comes where we have to leave, we'll once again have to go down three flights of stairs. Oh, I really, I don't want to think about that. The other thing is, yeah, now this is going to be like our third out of the home office. Yes. Which I cannot believe. That, I know. Because it's been like, when did we get the first one? In like 20... Four years ago. Yeah. So in four years, we'll have been in three office spaces. We've been, at, yeah, we've been at each one for two years. That's, <laughs> okay. our, that's our trend. All right. Gosh. We're nomads. We're nomads. Not by choice, typically. It's so weird that we've been to three different spots now. The, the people we're presently running from didn't want to renew their lease. And I think they were trying to like strong arm us into purchasing the location, purchasing the location. And we were like, well, we told you we couldn't and we're not gonna. So see ya. And then as soon as we did that, it was like all the power shifted to our side of the table. Oh my gosh. This is like it was negotiation so at its most frustrating though. No, I, I yeah, we have, we have to like really give the story. It's, it's proper. Um, okay. Go because ahead. that's, that's the whole idea. So we, we originally found this, this space that we're currently in and we were all like really jazzed about it. And we were like, Oh my gosh, let's like, let's get it. And then we'll like, we'll buy it someday. And so, so really they had it for sale when we originally leased it. Yeah. And their whole thing was like, we will lease it to you guys, but we really want it to be like under the, the, the idea that you are like working towards buying it from us. And as the years have gone on and like all the different, you know, trials and tribulations of running a small business, we were like, maybe we're not quite there yet. So it, it put us in a position of like, okay, now, now we have to figure out like, what do we do? Because they're not going to continue leasing it to us because we're not planning to buy it. Well, I agree. That was that was sort of the position we were they were in where it would have made sense. I would have felt I would have felt like I, it made sense to me if they were like trying to force us into doing this by being like, no, you can't you can't lease it again. Except that COVID happened. Right. Right. So like we they they could physically see that we were not present in the office. Right. You know, and like so many people are working from home for so often. And like we we wanted to renew and they were like, no. Right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you we, know, like we, no. we want to sell it. Yeah. They're like, we're sell it. like, all right. Which to me seems like commercial real estate is something that is uh, going to take a big old deep dive or is it, you know, has been struggling since the pandemic started. Sure. Yeah. I mean, like with the idea that lots of lots of offices realizing that they don't need to spend all this money on commercial space when people can just work from home and we all have the Internet and computers so that you can just communicate effectively anyway. But so the, the thing that I think is interesting about it is the the shift in negotiating power that like it's like you could technically be cognizant of it, but it's so it's so strange that the only way that we were able to like fully execute gaining the power in the negotiations was to have literally gone in selected a new space entirely right because as soon as we did that i sent in you know the issue of like hey we're no longer going to be staying you know at the new location or whatever and so it was like it's it was like an email that like i feel like i, I never would have had the confidence to send if it was a bluff Right. You know, like, and, and that's like, that was the truth of the matter. And then sure enough, as soon as I sent it, they were like, well, what if we lease it to you for another year? And we're like, what? Like, I just went through all this effort of finding a new spot. Yeah. So that I didn't have to. Uh, yeah. Because, because you guys wouldn't let us do that. But that's the thing is the only position I possibly could have been in was holding all of the cards that was, and maybe, maybe this is like, I don't even know. Maybe I'm too like, Hmm, what would it be? There's, there's gotta be a term for it. Like, I don't think I can negotiate through a bluff. 
Right. Like if you, does this change you going forward? We're like in the future, you yes, can be like, that's the question. okay, like if you were like, okay, well, here's the thing. If I got a place, then that would give me all the power because I would be on the way out. Could you just be like, what if I just operate as if I've gotten a place? Right. Could you do that? Because like, you're right. You're bluffing then. Like if we just sent the email, like we selected a new place, we need to move out. Like in their minds, like if, if they believe you, then there's the chance they're like, wait a minute, we don't want you to go. Please give us another year's worth of money. However, <laughs> right. they might, they might just be like, okay, see ya. And then if that's not, and then if you're wrong, then you're stuck. <laughs> then you're stuck. Yeah. 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 So I don't know. It's, it's a, uh, it's a funny thing. It's a like figuring out, I, I feel like it's just a life lesson, you yeah. know, like now that you've had enough perspective to see it from like the angle of, okay, like once I was secured, once I had that like new, new position, it did change the way that these people were responding to like all of our communications, which was like steadfast in this one way all the way up until literally I was like, okay, now I have my, uh, now I have a new situation squared away. I've signed a new lease. And then that's when finally they would have folded. Right. So it learned, it, it, it teaches the lesson that they would have folded eventually. Yeah. Huh. There you go. This is like, I was like, I always think you can probably get away with this with like car dealerships. Where, oh, sure, sure. Where if you, the problem is that often when you're shopping for a car, you like need the new car. Right. Right. That's why you're shopping. Cause otherwise just dropping the big money probably doesn't make a ton of sense in your just everyday life. Okay. Maybe it does. Maybe it does. People just buy cars for whatever reason. But, but if you were just like out there and you just like acted super excited about something, you went on the test drive and had all this enthusiasm and then just like went cold for like a week and we're like, just or like two weeks, let them like, let them call you to be like, Hey, we still got this. Are you still thinking about it? And you were just like, I'm still interested. I just, man, I can't pull the trigger. You know, like if you were just, if you're just messing with them to see how low you can get them to go, could know, you do it? I know. I know. I know. No. And it's, it's, it's very funny because I do think it's kind of the case. And it's, I feel like movies maybe and stuff like make it seem like cars are like much more negotiable than they sometimes actually are. Mm. Maybe, maybe like cars wouldn't be like the best example just because I think my understanding of the car industry is that new cars have like razor thin margins. Like, so they're not sold as like a super profitable thing. Like, like you buy a car for $25,000 the dealership doesn't make $25,000. They bought the car for $23,000 and right. you know, they sold it for a $2,000 profit. Right. They're making the money off the interest. Well, and not even always. Not, okay. So this is, this is sort of the interesting thing about car dealerships is that most of the time the car dealership themselves is not even financing your vehicle. Right. So like the transaction is over with them as like, as soon as you walk off the lot mm -hmm. because the bank bought the car from the dealership for the agreed upon amount. Oh, so the, the, they just get the cash immediately from the bank. They get the cash immediately, but very frequently they're one making a ton of money on service, which is like how a oh, lot of right. places. So if, if you bought your car from somewhere, it might just be the case that you're more inclined to then bring it back to that place to mm -hmm. have it worked on where that's labor is very high margin. So you can make tons of money on labor or used cars. So used cars sell for a huge profit margin relative to new cars. Mm. And typically that's because us as the people trading in our vehicles are just usually willing to take whatever they offer you. Right. So the, the one thing that I always <coughs> say about like when you're doing like a car transaction is don't negotiate on the price of the vehicle you're buying because chances are their arm is tied behind their back and they're not going to be able to like, even if they want to sell it to you, even if they were desperate to make a sale, there might literally be a line where it's like they, they cannot do it. Right. Um, and in chances are the amount that they are able to wiggle, if at all, is not going to be like decision worthy. Right. You know, like that, that's, it's not like, well, we can knock 250 bucks off $25,000 vehicle. 250 bucks is probably not enough to, yeah, I'd be like, oh, okay, I'm in. <laughs> okay, I'm in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so if you're that that is what, what you can negotiate on though is your trade. And so typically they're gonna try to give you as little as humanly possible so that they can then sell right. your used car for a much higher margin. Right. And so what I have always found is that if you negotiate, like, you know, if they're like, we'll give you two thousand for your old car, it's like well, he give me four thousand. And right. most of the time they will. Oh. That is that is like a good area to negotiate. Okay. It's on your trade and not on uh the new car itself. Wow, hot tips from Ben. Hot tips from Ben, yeah. Buying cars. I have have, I I do enjoy the the vehicle buying process. This is like a weird thing where um, 
of like through my own personal use for vehicles and the like different businesses and stuff. I have probably purchased a car almost every year since like maybe 2012. It is that's surprising. Because yeah. for a lot of people, it's like once every, I don't even know. Yeah, like, I mean, a typical finance period on a car would be like 60 months, five years. Yeah. So I would bet that most people probably pay off their car and then have it for an additional like one to two. Right. That would be my guess. Okay. That would be my guess, yeah. But okay, interesting story though on negotiating with that. Once upon a time, I made the worst financial decision of my life, which was buying a camper. Oh boy. Yeah. The camper. The camper. It was like one of these things that I was like so excited about. And in my mind, I was incredibly like idealistic about it. It I was you have, everyone, everyone who buys a camper or an RV, there's you, you can't buy it with like the, the, the mentality that I'm just going to use it every now and then, because that every now and then is not the appropriate amount of time to get your money's worth out of it. Exactly. It's like, yeah. if you get one, it's like you are committing to being like camper people or something right. like, it's like, this is what we do on weekends. Right. You know, it's like, like we're, we're booked at all the KOA sites and like, we're, you know, we've got it all squared away and we've got the, the truck to pull it. And we've got like, you know, a, like an outdoor rug that we roll out when we get there. Oh yeah. You know, the, the rug is really what, you know, sets up, sets off the room, <sighs> outdoor room. Yeah. Um, sets off the ground, but okay. So here's the thing though. If you have not spent time walking through campers, then go and do it because I guarantee you will be blown away. It it is surprising. We used to have um at my at my old real person job before we did YouTube's for the living. Yes. Yeah, we would have the the camper and RV show uh cuz you know, we had, had just big big open convention space floors. And every now and then you would go down and walk around or look inside and it would be like, oh my gosh. Yeah. Like there I mean the the insides are way like more luxurious than you're imagining. And I think because I think because it's such a small space and you don't expect it to be so nice, it like extra wows you. I think that's exactly it. It's it's yeah. a juxtaposition of your expectation being like blown away. Yeah. And and that is what it is. Like in in many of these things, especially in order to maintain the form factor and to uh, accommodate the fact that it is like being moved mm -hmm. at all times. Like you don't think about this, but effectively a camper when being totally is withstanding an earthquake like all the time. Oh, right. Like, like, brrr, how yeah. often is your entire house shaking because you accidentally like ran over the rumble strips? Yeah, you know, never. it's like never. Yeah. The whole house is never shaking. Right. This um, is like uh, this is like boats. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. Like boats, they're always breaking because they're just basically in earthquake mode at all times. At all, at, at all times, yeah. yeah. So, um, but like, you know, they'll have like TVs that like drop into like cabinets, like electronically and stuff. Mm -hmm. And then, like the slides all open out to like make it like this great big open area that's so much bigger than you like expect it to be based on like a yeah. closed up version of it. So anyway, um, I would say a, like, pretty early on after Alice and I have been dating for like a year and a half or so, this became like a fascination of ours. Like we went over to like the RV dealership and it became like something that we were doing for like fun uh -huh. was going and like walking through and touring campers. Right. Yeah. And we were like, these are so cool. And it like we, we just thought it was like the most fun thing. So probably for like a three month span, like every Sunday, we were like driving to like a different dealership just to see what the different models looked like. Right, you couldn't repeat because then the big guy'd be like, "Hey, you're back." Exactly. You ready to yeah, buy? Yeah. We had to, I had to go to like different places. And so like, you know, I think we were actually like on a trip once we found like an Airstream dealership, which Airstream is like the really nice, like silver oh. ones. And we were like, well, we got to go see those, um, which I would say they're super, it's almost like a Yeti cooler of mm -hmm. like RVs where it's like, they're like really, really, really nice, but they're also like kind of smaller than you expect them to be because oh. they don't have all the same moving parts. So they're like that much more reliable because there's nothing to break. Right. But at the same rate, you know, smaller, small, small. Uh, and then also like four times as expensive. But anyway, so we were, we were looking at these things and like, I think we were doing it so consistently that we were doing nothing but like daydreaming about it. And we were like watching YouTube videos of people who mm -hmm. like camper life full time. Oh, you got sucked and in. It's like, it, it's you got all sucked so in. fun. It's all so fun. So I'm like convinced that I'm like, okay, we're going to do this. And this is going to be like what me and Alice do. We're going to yeah. be like, we're going to be like having our bikes mounted onto the back. We're going to go to all the campgrounds. I even, uh, like the very first thing we did with it was take it to Disney. Yeah. And we stayed at like the Disney campground. 
But it was, this was one of those moments where I was hesitant enough because the camper wasn't solving an absolute day-to-day -day need thing where I, I went to the lot and I was like, I had like a number in my mind and I found the camper I wanted and it was so perfect. And it was like, I will do it today if you will sell it to me at this price. And they were like, oh, sorry. Like, you know, my manager won't let me do it or whatever. And I was like, no problem. <laughs> but like, this was buyer unmotivated. Right. You right. know, all right, it's all like, right. all right, no problem. Like yeah. that was the number I had if in my can, mind. If you can do my price, we'll do it. If you can't do my price, see you later. Right. And this was, this was the one time it ever worked. Oh. Where it was like, yeah. So I was like, this is my price. This is the one I want. I'm not willing to negotiate on either of them. And it was like, I'm okay with not buying this when it comes right. down to it. It doesn't if, matter. If you can't do it for me. And so literally a week goes by and they call me and they're like, hey, we'll do it. Ah. And I was like, no way. But then they had me hook, line and sinker because at right. that point it was like, now, now they've agreed. Now I have like affirmed myself that I've made a good decision because I like, I went in and I was fierce and I negotiated and I did everything right. And then we got it and just never use it uh. ever. So it's this, oh man, it like, it's not even, it's not like even like a, like a difficult monthly payment or anything like that. Like, it's not that it's like financially trying on me. It is that like, it, it is that I'm paying for something I'm not using. Yeah. And so it like tears me up every single month. Right. And it's I, also like huge. It's also huge. Yeah. <laughs> it is also huge. Yeah. It takes up my entire driveway. Right. You it's can't like just, thing. you can't just like put it in the drawer and be like, okay, well I don't use it, but at least I don't have to look at it. <laughs> right. <laughs> nope. Gotta look at it too. <laughs> yep. <laughs> hit big oh um, man yep and so that's the it's just and it's the only it is the only bill i have out of all of my bills out of all of my businesses that is not automated and i think that i refuse to automate it because i can yeah i refuse to automate it so i have to feel this pain of the manual <laughs> you, process of paying it every month right because if you if you don't feel it then you're like, you're like trying to punish yourself i'm like, trying like to punish don't myself. make don't make bad decisions ben yes it's like a monthly <sighs> reminder mm of it it's like a tattoo mm. you know okay it's like i can't get rid of it can't get rid of it <laughs> okay so you said you've had you you had a lot of fun like just going around looking at different campers like that was fun i have found that the thing at least in the past like couple of weeks that i have been looking at online that just like even without purchasing that is just bringing me joy to like look for or just look at are chess sets <laughs> no way because yes. we talked about chess oh yeah we talked about chess and i was like oh man like if i got a chess set like you know it feels to me like i could just go buy a chess a chess board no problem they're just you know everywhere you, you can swing that i can swing it yeah wow 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 exactly big so flex like, big flex <laughs> But, you know, I think I think I have probably right, like a little bit of brain crack about a chess board. Like it like, needs to be perfect. Like I want like if I if I buy a chess board, I want it to be like like a, on display. Tell I me want it to look nice. Tell me the details of your dream chess board. <sighs> well, see, I don't know. You could go you could go wood. You could go wood. You could go stone. I love stone. Right. And then so some boards will have like it'll almost look like a box and the board will be atop the box and the pieces get stored within the box. Yeah, yeah. To me, I don't like this. No, okay, of course that, not. To, that seems like like a like you're trying to do like a two in one ski. Oh, you don't want that. Yeah. You don't want that. Anything that tries to do all in one is yeah. never as good as separate. Plus it seems like you can, the case in which you then keep the pieces can be its own level of nice. It could be like mahogany you know? with like right. clasps. Yeah. But you then know? it's like, yeah, we're going to put the, we're going to put the box when you're not playing. Or do you just want, or does that even matter? Cause of course you're not storing the pieces. The pieces are on display on the board. On the board. Right. Or then is the, is the board itself. The, is, is it the table? Like, is the whole table oh, the chess board? You yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Or is the board rest upon the table? In my mind, the board rests upon the I table. So. But I, I could so. also see the angle where you would have like mm -hmm. a, uh, I imagine it to be almost like a small bistro table. Yeah. Circular with like the square grid like drawn on it. Yeah. Or carved into it maybe. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That sounds good. So I, then let me ask you this. If you have stone pieces, they have felt bottoms so that they're like <sighs> nice and soft on the placement. Or is it better to hear that like stone on stone like click? Mm, I think. I think you want like a. I think you, you would want like the felt. Okay, you would want the felt. I so think like the so. Nice, soft, muffled. I think almost so. like a quiet, closed cabinet. Yes, my problem, my, my I like fear the felt. It's always that like green felt. You it know? is. It, it's it's like, like it's like bad green felt. Right, it's bad green. It's like it looks like the the top of a used poker table you bought yes, ten years does. ago. You are hitting the nail square on the head. And there's like it's always adhered with like a ten year old hot glue gun. Right. Yeah. And it's like kind of <coughs> haphazardly like not centered. Right. Yeah. So it's like um oh, boy. This, mm. I like my to think beautiful chess set. Except there's this the knight 
like you gotta watch it because the white knight is like it's got a little flapper on the bottom or something you can't have can't it. have that can't no have. what you need is the felt to be applied in a larger than the piece situation and then and then carved off almost not carved off but like cut away mm, by hand by hand yeah yeah. yeah yeah so it's like perfectly imperfect like there's th- there's a quality to that you know i think yes yeah but i don't want a felt sticker that someone just slapped no. on the bottom uh, yeah uh, that i feel like in my mind, like stone, marble, maybe, yeah. is the way to go. Yeah. That seems like, let's wait. You know, like you steal a piece with like a marble. Pff, oh, Ooh. feels good. <laughs> like wood. I've seen some wooden ones online and they look, they look nice. But it feels like if you like <clears throat> knocked off someone's pawn, stole their bishop or whatever, like you, it feels like the wood would be, it'd be too light. Okay. To get a good satisfying steel. Okay. So here's my next question mm-hmm. for you though. Are you familiar with the chessman set? The chessman set. Okay, so the chessman set was, I believe, like a very archaic, uh, like set of chess pieces, uh, made from like walrus ivory. I oh, believe. Oh, bone was a. I was. I forget the name of the website I was looking at, but they had like wood and marble and bone were the uh, available materials with which you could purchase or plastic. But let's. Pff, we're not going plastic. We're not. We, we, we're, we all, we're all okay. in agreement Look, over if we're here. Buying, yeah, if we're buying display chess sets. <laughs> <laughs> right, 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 right. No, I believe I believe the idea is that the chessman set was like the it was like found and it was like one of like what is maybe believed to be like the like an original chess set. Interesting. Uh but I if I if I am understanding correctly, I do believe that the pieces from the Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone movie okay. are represented as like what the chessman set looks like. Okay. Like those are like the, maybe like original variations of each of the, the respective characters. Really? I, I believe that that is the case. That's surprising to me because those look like people. They do. I agree. At least the pawns and the king and the queen do. I'm trying to find more. Maybe, I, maybe I'm wrong completely. I don't know. I don't know why this is. Maybe it's Ron's chess set. That is the case. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So the pawns look more like, like just like almost like little, all right, let me see. Let me see what you're looking at here. This is called Isle of Lewis Chess Set by Lewis Chessman. By Lewis Chessman. Interesting. These do not look. These do not look bad. But to me, I think. I think I want my pieces to be like those very classic looking pieces. Like you got the cross on the king, the crown on the queen. You got the horse. You got the castle. Okay. Okay. Yeah, very like, classic. Very classic. But even that, I would. I would look at some. I feel like I'm it's it's a fun thing because it's so easy to be so critical like of the thing you're looking at. Sure. Like, I'd be looking at some sets and I'm like, these well, I really like the material, but look how look how skinny these rooks are, like as if. I don't <laughs> think so. Something that can move as many spaces as necessary in perpendicular locations. Yeah. Directions is what I meant by locations. Yeah. Yeah. I understood. Yeah, yeah. It can't be it can't be like skinny like yeah, that. Yeah, I'm going to put this in my house with this skinny looking rook. I don't think so. I'll move on next chess set. Okay. So, I think I've talked about this before, maybe I haven't. Uh there is there has been in any hobby that I've ever been a part of, I there's always been someone uh closely relate like in in my my proximity that I've always nicknamed stuff. And they're always Ugh. like they're always that person that like bought very heavily into all the like swag associated with an activity, but they their, it, their skill level attached to it has never matched the quality of the goods they have. Mm-hmm. So like uh, the the first person I ever met like this was uh, in a rec soccer league. Uh, there was a player on my team who showed up and had like the name brand cleats and like the easy removable shin guards and like a like pro league ball mm. and like wore jerseys, you know, like Premier League jerseys right. to practice. To practice. You know, and it's like it's like. Man, like you, it's like you, you, you're not even bad, but you are not the best player on the team. Right. And like you have got all the stuff. Yeah. And so this was the, this was like the very first instance in every hobby I've ever done. It's mm-hmm. always been the case that I have met somebody in my, my doings that right. proved to have bought heavily into all of the, the things, but then are not able to execute as well as their gear would suggest. Right. Like so, they maybe, yeah, I, I know exactly the kind of person you're talking about. Yes. So the, the thing that I feel like would be my fear here um, is like, would you end up having the nicest chess set? And then like, although this is, this won't be a problem for you because you're just going to be good at chess. 
Well, but like, what if your chess set is better than your your game? Oh, for sure, that's going to be. I I don't I don't know. My fear is that I think maybe what's making it fun is that I think you're right. I'm like buyer unmotivated because right. it's not like it's not like you can't just play chess. Like you can open. I could open a screen. I could go to like instantchess.com and be playing someone in under ten seconds. You know, like right. it's not like chess is far away from playing at any given moment, but. I think my fear is that if I had a physical chess set, it would it would go unused. And that would be like I don't like I would love to buy it and use it. Right. But if I buy it and it just sits there, I'll just feel bad about it. At least it doesn't take up your whole driveway. What? At least, <laughs> At least it won't be taking up my whole driveway though. Right. So that's that's the conundrum I'm in. I feel like my my hope is that see this is where I like in my mind, once my children are just just a bit older and could like understand that like how to play, like no problem. I just get it then. Chess seems like a perfectly wonderful hobby for kids to have. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. 100%. Yeah. Then I'm also like, see, it feels unlikely that my children would defeat me at chess. And that seems demoralizing to them. Yeah, I can tell you as having been your brother, it is demoralizing to play games with you. Yeah. Well, but see, dad taught me to play chess and it's not like he was just letting me win or anything. Oh, so you beat dad? No. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. I see. <laughs> You see what I, you see? I, I do see, I do see. Yeah. So you lost, but you still had right. vigor for it. Right. Although you do not own a chess set. Well, not so, right now. But maybe you would have. But I, but <laughs> if you had won. I aspire to owning a chess set. <laughs> That's like, I aspire to smoke meats. Yeah, exactly. We're in the same spot. Maybe this is like really, we should just start a channel or a podcast entirely around the idea of things that we are like half committed to doing that we have not actually followed through with yet. That's right. We will. This, yeah. We'll call it unstarted. Unstarted. That's right. And Ben will have a smoker. We'll, we'll have a horse and we'll have a chess set. Yes. <laughs> Did you know that the coyote, the coyote in some cultures is to have believed to have discovered the first horse? What? That it, doesn't even make sense. It doesn't even make sense. What kind of sentence is that? It's one that I found. And I, I again. What makes you think the horse didn't discover that coyote? Because the horse was, I believe, the like, uh, like nephew of the coyote. Ben, you were getting into some weird, you have coyotes and canoes with birds. <laughs> Why do birds need to be on boats? They can fly. <laughs> These are the questions. That ki coyote and raven out there looking for horse. <laughs> what I'm discovering with coyotes is that if you love anything hard enough, you'll find that there's just tons of information about it out there. Yeah, this barely even sounds like that. This well, hardly even seems like information. No, it's information, all right. Uh, well, the coyote discovered the first horse, so accept it. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I still don't know what that means. <laughs> Who, how, some, who was there to witness this? What if the person- The coyote was there. The, the, who'd he tell? He come the back. raven. <laughs> While they were paddling away yeah. from the horse. Who would paddle away from a horse? That's, that's ridiculous. So anyway, we got to get a chess set and we got to smoke some meat. It sounds like it sounds like it. We could probably play a game of chess while the meat smokes. Oh man. Now we're talking. That actually would be pretty fun. It would be pretty fun. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, we, we got, a, we got a plan. We got a plan. We got a plan. All right. Let's see. If we could find the perfect chess set, which was a tall order. I mean, like if, if people can't get their felt game in order, then we'll, we'll never own one. Let me tell you, this is something you will learn almost within minutes of diving into the, the world of online chess shopping is that you can go with like as big as you want on like spending wise. Like the first site I clicked on, like they make you click through a bunch of things like to help, to help narrow you in on your perfect chess set, yeah, of course, as yeah. it were. Yeah, and yeah. like, but option one is like the price is like the price ranges. There's like six boxes you could click on. The first one is zero to 500. Oh, you're like, wow. Yeah, so you're like, uh-huh. So you can go, you can go pretty big. This is, okay, this is the exact, uh, like the same thing applies to mountain bikes. Oh, because I, well, I think, um, because we, we have, you and I are, we ride bikes together. It's a hobby we share. Yeah. Right. Yes. Agreed. Agreed. Road bikes, road bikes this past weekend. Yes. The 
thing about mountain biking and like telling your friends about it and such is that it is, it, it seems like almost everybody's interested in doing it. Like very few of my friends have been like, no, I, I, I do not want to go and enjoy time in the woods with my friends. Mm -hmm. Like everybody is always <coughs> on board, but then like a, a proper mountain bike, uh, like in, in the, I guess the category of like what we ride, they get very expensive very quickly. Yeah. Uh, to the point where it's like it, it, the biggest barrier for anybody to join into it is typically just the cost. Like yeah. it's, it's just expensive. Well, see, this is the difference. The difference is, I think with mountain bikes is like, as you scale the cost, the better the bike becomes. Whereas the quality of game you can play by spending more money on a chess set is zero. <laughs> That's a good point. You can play the same game of chess with a ten dollar set as you could with a thousand dollar set. I like to, <laughs> no, Jay. I like to think that if if you have hand carved stone, you play better. You play better. That's that's part of it. It comes with a gold certificate, like with Pro a wax seal. Probably when you, open you are it. motivated to learn more. Maybe, yeah. maybe, maybe that's what it comes down to. Yeah. So yeah. you're you're like pot committed. It's like mm, if yeah. I'm going to own this, I best be good. I best be playing me some chess. Yes. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Okay. All right. Well, I feel like that's a good place to leave it for today. We've, we've covered a lot of bases. We have covered a yeah. lot of bases. Guys, thank you so much for tuning into this week's episode of The Pop. We do want to give a special thank you to these patrons who now support us over on Patreon. If you would like to get a little bit of extra bonus content each week, Jay and I do a special segment called After the Final Pop, where once we hang up our microphones for this episode, we'll just unhang them up right away to record another 15, 20 minutes. Yeah of additional chatter. Yeah. Um, I feel like there's, there's always some, there's always some good quality nuggets in there. You there know? are. And, yeah. And after the final pop, if you guys want to check that out, you can do so by going to patreon.com slash popcorn culture. Uh, otherwise, thank you to these patrons, including Catherine Stein, Roberto Gomez, Rachel Gomez, Nicholas Miller, 13 Windex. Very interesting name. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I like that one. Uh, Caleb Dalby, Selena, Ben H, Grace Marvin, Destiny Mundy, Jay Jesse Trowbridge, Riley Bange, Josie Burkhart, and Cynthia Passos. Thank you all so much for your support over on the Patreon. Again, if you want to, if you guys want to check that out and possibly hear your name at the one of our, at the end of one of our episodes, you can do so by going to patreon.com slash popcorn culture. Otherwise, until next week, pop pop.